we're going to break down the transfers and the high school and JUCO signees. So we'll start, we'll start with the transfers. We're going to do alphabetical order. Uh, just today, just today, actually this afternoon, Tennessee probably arguably got their most important transfer yet. Uh, I might totally butcher his name. I hope I don't, but I'm going to try. Uh, Shannon made a good, yeah, buddy. He said, what about that receiver room now? That's exactly right. Uh, Chris Brazell, I'm assuming I'm saying his name correctly. You are. Uh, Rustin, tell us about Chris Brazell. Six five wide receiver, freshman All American. Um, he was a big time possession guy for for Tulane. Had over seven hundred yards receiving, five touchdowns. Um, big physical receiver. I mean, honestly, I think it's a. I hope it's a pro all the way around. Um, but there is kind of the lingering idea of was this a signing in case Brew is gone. Um, oh. you know, well, you had to go and put a damper on it for us <laughs> because, because technically he and brew play the same position. Now, Brazil is versatile enough. He could slide over and play the X where Ramel Keaton was. Um, so, you know, I, I tell you, if you can get Dante Thornton and, you know, get him motivated, get him running well, get Chaz Nimrod running well, get squirrel running well out of the slots and have brew and Brazil opposite each other, both at six, five, both big physical receivers. You can, you can make some hay with that. Um, that's, that's got a lot of potential. Just like Jeff said, that wide receiver room, uh, just got way better and much deeper actually. Uh, and that impacted my decision for later in the show. When we talk about our top three freshman signees who can make an impact. Yeah. The transfer today actually impacted my decision on that. Um, so uh, let's see. I Jeff think, said, I love this class with the transfers. Absolutely. I think the one thing people have to recognize too is he was freshman All-American because he had over 700 yards receiving. What that really says is the kid catches the ball. Like, In order to get over 700 yards receiving, you're catching a lot of targets. So what does it say about him as a player that Tulane was targeting him enough for him to get over 700 yards receiving? I mean, that, as a true freshman, like Absolutely. The, kid, the kid's a player. And Tulane's good. And like, he was a big reason why they were good. And now he's an orange and that's, that's a good thing. Shannon said, let the horses run. Absolutely, man. Uh, throw, throw it deep. <laughs> uh, Lewis, welcome, Lewis. Good to have you. He said, Brazil just de uh, just committed from the portal. Receiving core just got taller. They sure did. Uh, Zach said, let me tell you now, Dante Thornton Jr. is going to have a revenge year. Man, I hope so, because he was just starting to play really well, and then he got injured this year. Uh, Shannon said, Brazil is also hard to tackle. Yep. He is, he is weirdly, he is weirdly slippery for somebody six, five. Like he, he is very shifty. Well, Jason Swain was super excited about it this afternoon. He says six, five with feet too, you know, cause he can run. So he was mm -hmm. like, man, that's, that's good stuff. Uh, Carl said, Hey, welcome Carl. Good to have you, buddy. He said, we'd love to see some four wide out packages. Y'all. Yeah, absolutely, man. I totally agree. Everyone wants to eat. Maybe they'll swap out packages. Totally agree. Absolutely. Shannon said, I guarantee every coach on our schedule next year said, oh, crap. <laughs> That's exactly right. That's exactly right. The one luxury they do have is, you know, Holden Stace is here now, but, you know, Ethan Davis is right there also. And it, when in moments when they go with Ethan Davis at tight end, it's like having four wide receivers on the field. He's, he's going to remind a lot of people of Kyle Pitts. Rustin, our second transfer going alphabetically is Jermon McCoy from Oregon State. Tell us a little bit about Jermon. Yeah, he's my favorite. Um, so I played in 12 games as a freshman at Oregon State on a very good Oregon State defense. Ended up starting five, um, played his way into a starting role, finished the year with 31 tackles, two interceptions. Um, but if you watch his tape, what I love about him is he plays a lot of man and zone. And he does both well. Young corners in college typically do one or the other. It's rare to find one that can do both. And and so I, I hope that with him and Gabe Judy Lolly out there on islands, that they're planning to play a lot more man with the two of them. 
Um, I think that helps everybody. Um, but I'm, I'm really, I'm really excited to watch him play. Kid likes to strike people, plays very physical. Um, he's got a skill set that is very missing in that secondary. Let's see. Holden stays tied in from Notre Dame transfer. Tell us about Holden, Rustin. So I am sure that there is something in Josh Heupel's overall offensive philosophy that requires that he always have a big body tight end. But dadgummit, when you've got a receiving room like that, why do we have to have a big body tight end? Let's just go four wide and air the freaking thing out. Like it, it drives me nuts. Um, but for some reason, we just have to have a big tight end. Um, Holden stays is a good player. He's he's played in high level games. I mean, he 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 had multiple um, multiple receiving yards, multiple games at Notre Dame last year, um, playing in you know the big stage. I mean, it's it's Notre Dame. He he played in a lot of high level games. Um, so he's going to come in, he's going to probably start right away. He's going to contribute. Um, you know, but the reality is I would so much rather see four dudes out there flying around wreaking havoc than the one clunker trying to run curls and hitches. Uh, Carl said, maybe they want stays for chipping and blocking. That's exactly why they want him. And Jeff hit it as well. He wants tight end instead of four wide for the run. That is exactly right. Yeah, uh, that, I was I was an offensive coordinator for 11 years. I know why they want him. I just don't want him. I don't want any <laughs> tight end out there. I want four dudes who can fly around and make things happen to spread and stretch the field. So now Dylan Sampson has even more running lanes. Let's go back to the old air raid three and five foot splits and get the linemen as wide as humanly possible. So the defense has to spread out and play every gap. I don't want some clunker. We already have five linemen. We don't need another one. I don't want some clunker out there running around, slowing the pace down. Let's go. Let's get out and fly around. Well, that's why that's why Ethan Davis really needs to get better at blocking. Exactly. He can be the, he can be the dude that's the other one. Well, our last transfer uh, that would be qualify as a transfer is Jacoby Thomas, defensive back from Middle Tennessee State University. Rustin, tell us about Jacoby. Like that kid too. Um, it'll be interesting to see what they do with him. Could play the star, could play one of the corner spots. Technically could kind of maybe play safety, but he's a little undersized for that. He got away with it at MTSU, although his best game of the year at MTSU was against Alabama. So, you know, I'm, I'm sure that was the video that stood out to coaches when they watched that back and were like, hmm, okay. Um, this kid's playing against the best of the best and he's holding his own. So, um, you know, he's undersized to play safety, but who knows, maybe they'll walk him down to the star and, um, he could thrive there. Um, but I, he's, he's got, he's got a big ceiling. That kid ha- plays crazy hard. He likes to hit. He's a striker who doesn't m- miss tackles. Um, I, I like that kid. I think he's going to be a big help. And you want a safety who doesn't mind hitting people. That's what you need right there.